Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Today we cover the press conference that was held in Montgomery, Alabama and Birmingham, Alabama, two different events on two different days, and we were there. We took our news cameras to Alabama last week and we interviewed the people who are supporting and even opposing Roy Moore for US Senate. Now, as a full disclaimer, Roy Moore is a personal friend of mine. I've known him over 11 years. And yet, we are not endorsing or opposing him as a candidate or any candidate on this particular program. We invite his opponents or a spokesman for the Doug Jones campaign to come on our show and we will give you equal time. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. It has been my privilege to be the pastor of Roy and Kayla Moore for over 25 years. I know the entire family. I've watched his brother Roy, and that's what I call him, Brother Roy. Sometimes I get confused and call him Brother Judge Roy. <laughs> but Brother Roy, I've watched him as he stood for the acknowledgement of God. He has stood against the attack on the standard for biblical marriage and for the sanctity of human lives. For 25 years, he has never given me any reason to doubt any of those characteristics, none. Therefore, I can only speak what I know, not what I don't. Friends, I know the man, and he is a man of character. So therefore, we're standing with him as born-again Christians to stand for my brother, Roy Moore. We're praying for everybody in the entire situation, but we're especially praying for Roy and Kayla, that God's strength, His hand of protection, and His peace might be upon them. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tim Yarbrough, rather, he is with Trinity. Uh, excuse me, he's from Trinity, Alabama, and we're grateful that uh, you've joined us. Where are you? There you are. Oh. Well, I am about as typical an Alabamian as you're going to run into. I live eight miles from where I was born and raised. The people have, of Alabama have learned to trust what they do know about Roy Moore. Not because of his words or ambitions, but because of the 40-year fruit of his life. His informed and matured convictions and his willingness to stand upon those convictions in the face of significant opposition. It is that type of fruitful character which causes our people to trust what we can expect in the future from the life and conduct of Roy Moore. It's also what bothers his enemies. Amen. A wise people, not snared in the frenzy of violations of the Ninth Commandment, will maturely observe and decide that the overwhelming presumption must weigh in favor of such long-standing known and demonstrated fruit. That's right. And for those who have risen up as enemies of our values here in Alabama, I owe you a thank you. You have accomplished more in a short period of time <laughs> than we have in a lifetime of work. I have watched in our coffee shops, our restaurants, our reading clubs, our classes, a galvanizing of faith that I have not witnessed in my lifetime. So, we are instructed in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. To judge more, I thank you and your dear wife for your boldness, because like the Apostle Paul, throughout the North Alabama area, it has galvanized people. To our enemies, I thank you. 
you have done God's service to our people. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. I'm Dr. Chaps with Pastor Mark Gidley of Faith Bible Church in Gadley, Alabama. Pastor Mark, thank you for coming today. Yes, sir. Thank you. Honored to be here. So why do you support Roy Moore and why did you come here today? Well, I've been supporting Roy Moore for quite a long time. Um, I live in the same county that Judge Moore lives in, and uh, so I've known him for many years, but about the last 15 years, I've known him on a more personal level, and that has grown over those 50, 15 years. Here's the thing I've seen out of Judge Moore. Uh, he's been consistent in standing for biblical values. He believes he's a strong constitutionalist. He believes that our rights come from God, not, the con not, not our government, but from God, and that's stated in our Constitution. Of course, he's pro-life, and I am very active in the pro-life community. And, uh, and then, of, of course, just uh, some of his things he stands for, such as repealing Obamacare and building the wall and those kind of things. But primarily I supported him because of his stand for biblical values. And here's the thing. We have watched as he has twice been removed from his spot as Supreme Court Justice of Alabama, but would not bend from his stand even at the expense of losing his position. So you, you've got to respect that. And I think that's something that is deeply miss missing in Washington. Uh, I think I think we have the uh, the establishment and then the, of course the corruption too. We know is there. The people that want to work back when deals that are willing to do whatever is politically correct, whatever they need to do to save their political career, rather than standing even at personal loss for what is right for America. So there's a question, and it's been floating around for a few decades now. Uh, the atheists like to say separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. Does that mean to you that pastors should not be involved in politics or that church people should not be involved in voting? Well, David Barton, probably the one of the greatest uh, knowledgeable person of our godly heritage, makes it perfectly clear that in the foundation of our country, it was the clergy and it was the church that actually propelled this country to its liberty. Uh, and even back then, uh, pastors and clergy encouraged people to be involved in government. They encouraged them to get involved in, in politics, in voting. Uh, even some of the things we have in our Constitution were taken from sermons based on what David Barton has said. So what we see is, is it was very important in the foundation of our country for the ministry and the church and the clergy to be involved in governmental affairs. What we've seen happen in our generation, especially since World War II, we've seen a drifting away from that. And what's been the result? The result has been what we see today that we have in Washington a large constituency of people that believe government and God don't go together. And so we're losing our foundational principles. So we've got to come back to this idea that, that we, while we are not necessarily to be just political forces, we are to be influencing forces in the church, I believe, to help set the standard, set the scale, set the bar, if you will, for the foundation, for the morality, if you will, of our nation. So I think the absence of the church has been part of our problem, so we must get back engaged. Now let me say that on this, everybody needs Jesus, Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative. Yes. And as a minister, my first responsibility is to propel the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I have to be careful not to try to alienate myself from very people I need to reach for Jesus. But we also must stand for biblical principles, because what does Second Timothy tell us? Pray for those in authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life. So I believe that means we need to support people that will hold to the values that our country was founded on. Right, thank you. Well, thank you, Pastor. Yes. Um, any last words? Why do you, in particular, support Roy Moore, the man? You must know him by now. Well, it, it, I support him, but basically that's what I said a while ago. I've always known him a man to stand on biblical principles, to stand for the Word of God, to do that even in his own peril. And, and I haven't seen anything consistent with Judge Moore's lifestyle that in any way relates to some of the things that have been he's been accused of. I've seen a man that in my estimation of the 15 years I've known him that has walked upright, that has lived by biblical values and has uh, made that the forefront of his life. So those are all reasons, a few of the reasons that I support Judge Roy Moore. Well, thank you, Pastor. Mention your church, your website. How do people find you? Oh, yes. We're a faith worship center. We're located in the uh, 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 eastern part of Etowah County and uh, the eastern part of Alabama. You can go to fwcfamily.com, and there you can check out our website. You can watch us online on Sunday morning, and we'd love to have anybody join in to be with us. Pastor Mark Gidley of Gadsden, Alabama. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. God bless you. All right. I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll be right back.
giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Today I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Many call President Donald Trump's election a miraculous win. But was his election as President of the United States an actual answer to prayer? What was the spiritual dimension, if any? In his new book, God and Donald Trump, author Stephen E. Strang explores President Trump's miraculous victory and what it means for the future of our republic. This is the story behind a divine plan, a grassroots voter uprising, and a miraculous victory no one expected a first-person account of one of the most contentious elections in American history. It offers a penetrating look at the factors that shaped Donald Trump's character and worldview, how openness to spiritual leaders helped build his commitment to religious liberty, and how he captured the largest evangelical vote in American history to win the Electoral College. The Honorable Michelle Bachman. Everyone is curious about the topic of God and Donald Trump. I'm confident you'll be pleased by what you read. Todd Starnes, Fox News Channel says, God and Donald Trump may very well be one of the most important books about the Trump presidency. Dr. Robert Jeffress, senior pastor, First Baptist Church, Dallas said, God and Donald Trump is a well-written, much needed look at the undeniable hand of God working in our nation's most recent presidential election. It will restore your hope. And Dr. Elvita King, niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., praises God and Donald Trump. This must-read book reaches far beyond politics into the redeeming frequencies that America surely needs. God and Donald Trump by Stephen E. Strang is a powerful account with behind-the-scenes exclusives and insightful commentary from Christian leaders, including those who prophesied before the election that God had raised up Donald Trump to lead the nation through a time of crisis. God and Donald Trump, published by Frontline, released November 7th in bookstores and online at GodAndDonaldTrumpBook.com. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. Dr. Chaps, we just finished the Roy Moore press conference and Pastor Ernie Sanders drove 10 hours to get here in Birmingham, Alabama, all the way from Cleveland, Ohio. Pastor, welcome to the program. Actually, it was 12 hours and I came here today. I risked being homeless, like I said, because it's my 49th wedding anniversary. But my wife says, you go down there and stand for that good man. So the risk was you could have been kicked out of your house by your wife. Right, right. It would have been for any other cause, but uh, so you know that the this was very, very important because, you know, we, we stood with Roy back when they, they took away the Ten Commandments. We were down here then myself. Fifteen years ago. Wiley Drake, he brought a, a dozen men, I brought a dozen men, and we stood. I was here at his trial. In fact, at his trial, uh, I was told if I had an outburst, that they would clear the courtroom because the communist attorney said, your people have accused me of being a communist. And I yelled out, they should have because you are. <laughs> and and they didn't like hearing that from you. No. Tell me about Doers of the Word Baptist Church. You preach the gospel, and is it political? Well, I'll tell you what we do. If you go back all the way from Genesis to Revelation, every single priest, every single prophet, every single preacher, their faith and their politics were inseparable. They were one of the same and no one ensued that more than the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's exactly the case with Roy, and that's the case with me. Well, thank God for your faithfulness. You brought a, a carload full of people here. Uh, can you talk about why your people got in the car and made that trek? Yeah, because they felt the very same way we did. I, and I could have brought, brought more uh, if we'd had uh, more time. I could have brought a whole busload. I could have brought a, a, one of the, the great big coaches filled if, if I'd had a little more to notice. Pastor, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? There are so many people watching and they think, oh, Roy Moore and politics, but this isn't all about that. It's really about 
freedom of religion, but even more than that, it's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, everything that God's Word, the Bible, teaches us. For example, did you know over there in, in Isaiah chapter 32, verses 1 through 8, the Bible says in the last days when the Lord returns, just prior to his return, the vile person would be called the liberal. Now, hardly anybody knows that. Very few pre preachers preach on that. But that's exactly what's happening today. Uh, you've got two nations inhabiting one land. One that believes in God, believes in country, believes in honor and decency and dignity, believes in the family and things that are good and clean. And the other that believes in political correctness, which there's not one thing, there's no redeeming values or attributes, not one bit in what is called political correctness today. Why do you love Jesus? I love him because he first loved me and because he's my Lord, my God, and my Savior. And because... Well, I know that he will always do, he always has and he will always do what he says. And he says he'll never leave us or forsake us, and he's the only one that can make that statement. Thank you. Pastor Ernie Sanders, Doers of the Word Baptist Church near Cleveland, Ohio. Pastor, thank you for coming to this program. God bless you, my friend. Thank you, Gordon. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. And now I'm interviewing Pastor Stephen Broden from, just, uh, say your church again. That's Fair Park Bible Fellowship. Well, thank you. you here, you're Dallas, in, Texas. and because you're in Dallas, you've frequently been a guest on our show by Skype, and you lead an advocacy movement for the right to life of the unborn. Is that why you support Roy Moore? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We need that voice in the Senate more than ever before. We have a culture of death, and we need to change the attitudes and behavior and conduct of our nation around this issue. And of course, the black community is deeply uh, concerned about that issue in that most of Planned Parenthood's facilities are located within the black community, 80 percent. And a large portion of the abortions that are performed in America are performed on black women. Now, on Halloween this year, Planned Parenthood in some city actually sent out a tweet on Twitter, and they said, the best thing that black women can do to be safe is to abort their children, or words to that effect. Do you think that organization has targeted the black or urban communities? There's no question about it, that we are a part of their eugenic plot to control the population in our community. Margaret Sanger said, Negroes are like weeds, we need to get rid of them. That was a statement that she made, and anyone can find that on the internet. And Hillary Clinton is so proud of Margaret Sanger. So that's, in comparison on a national standard, perhaps why we elected Donald Trump. I believe that's why Donald Trump was elected because she stood for everything that was the, an the antithesis of everything that we believe relative to our constitution, liberty, and the social issues that impact our nation and our children. She stood with those issues that are changing our morality in our country. And so we voted for Donald Trump uh, in order to slow the, the, the decline, if you will, in our nation around issues like marriage, same-sex marriage, uh, gender fluidity, uh, and other issues like abortion and embryonic stem cell research and selling of baby parts in the public square. This stuff is happening in America today. And if Hillary Clinton would have become, would have become president, she would have codified a lot of those policies and concerns that we have into law. So in the weeks before Donald Trump surprised everybody by winning the election to president last year, there were some sexual allegations made against him. Uh, is that comparable to these false allegations that you believe are made, being made against Roy Moore? Or uh, what do you think the voters are going to do? Well, I, I think it's comparable. There's no question about it. It's a tactic of the left. Uh, to bring this, this, these uh, allegations out. It was done on Herman Cain. It was done on uh, Clarence Thomas. It was done on President Trump. And it's being done on Judge Moore. And it's an effort to try to derail and distract and distort the character of the candidate. And I think most Americans are aware of that. And we're trusting that Alabamians will recognize the tactic and will vote overwhelmingly for Judge Roy Moore. Well, Lord willing, that, uh, you know, from your lips to God's ears, if God gives us mercy and Judge Roy Moore is elected a U.S. Senator, something's going to have to change in Washington. How do you think Mitch McConnell will receive him? Well, I'm sure he'll do everything he can to resist it, and if he can 
exercise some tactic, some parliamentary tactic to not seat him. He may try that, but I believe that he will not do that if the vote is overwhelming by the Alabamians and the kind of demonstration and display that took place today with men and women around the country who came to this state to stand with Judge Roy Moore is a message to Mitch McConnell that don't mess around with this election and seat George Roy Moore if he wins, seat him. Because if he doesn't do that, it, it could have devastating consequence well, it on tell the Republican Party yeah. and on, uh, on the nation in general. It would tell the voters of Alabama that the voters are not sovereign, that the swamp or the establishment has more power than the voters. Is that against the Constitution? Oh, absolutely. That's not, there's no question about it. That's not even uh, a question that in merits an answer. We know it's against the Constitution, and, and much of what's happening in Washington, D.C., is against the Constitution. And so we need to try to get as many elected officials who represent the, the quality and character of Judge Moore into Washington, D.C., who stands for the principles of our Constitution and will apply those principles according to the original intent of the Founding Fathers. Thank you, Pastor. Mention your website. How do people contact you? Uh, you can contact uh, me at my Facebook, Stephen Broden, uh, Facebook, and just contact me there. Stephen Broden. Pastor, thank you for coming on the program. You bet. All right. I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll be right back. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, This book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined now by Lisa Panette with Keep the Republic. Lisa, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So introduce yourself, why did you come all the way to Birmingham and where are you from? Um, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I came here to support Judge Moore. Um, we all need more Judge Moore. So uh, in my state of Missouri, I have uh, Senator Blunt, and he's even come out against uh, Judge Moore. And I said I, I would be honored to have someone like Judge Moore um, representing me. So are you disappointed in Ju uh, Senator Blunt and other Republicans like John McCain, even Mitch McConnell, who are not standing with Roy Moore? In fact, they're doing the opposite. Yes, even more so with my own uh, Senator Blunt, because I think we all understand and know who John McCain is. Um, they all represent the swamp. But I think Blunt has kind of um, positioned himself somewhat in the middle, in the middle ground, and um, this kind of it put him in the swamp category. So for me, I just don't believe that I can trust him and trust in his leadership going forward if he would be so openly supportive of opposing someone as good as Judge Moore. Do you think this is going to have 
repercussions on the establishment? I know the establishment is attacking Judge Moore at this point, but do you think, should he be elected, should he be seated, that in the long run the voters are going to rebel against people like Roy Blunt or, or John McCain or Mitch McConnell? I do. I think there's going to be a backlash. And I mean, I know for me personally, I have different groups and I put out the voting list every year. And so that goes to a substantial amount of people that trust, in my opinion, and decision on who to vote for. And I always give a, a nice, lengthy explanation. And I can no longer support, um, you know, Senator Blunt going forward because he has done this and positioned himself this way. So for me, going forward, I will have to say, I'm sorry, you know, I, I can't uh, vote for Mr. Blunt. And, and you had supported him in the past, and the, your voter guides in the past said, hey, everybody vote for Roy Blunt, and that's maybe part of the reason he became a U.S. Senator. Now you're going to withdraw your support from him. Uh, how many people might your voter guides reach, and how big of an impact you, could that possibly have? Well, I mean, there's no way of really telling because they say that one person that you touch may touch a hundred, you know. The butterfly effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They say that that can happen, but even beyond that, like I have many friends that are in the radio industry and media, and so they actually used my guide, um, which was quite a compliment, uh, to, to pick candidates. And so people even got their, their guide. So, I mean, who knows? It's a lot. So Missouri tends to go back and forth. Sometimes they have a Democrat, sometimes they have a Republican. Republican. But in the Republican primary, do you think there would be a Roy Moore type candidate who could, who, who would want to run for U.S. Senate and challenge Roy Blunt in, in the primary? Well, I mean, we haven't seen anything like that yet. Um, but we do have good men of integrity that are in politics now. So I guess it, it, it's more like, would they make that leap to that position? Um, we're praying, you know, we're praying that that does happen and that we can have people with integrity and character just like Judge Moore. So, I mean, we can only pray and see what the Lord does. It's really God's kingdom in the end, isn't it? Yes. Tell me about your faith and why does your personal faith in Jesus Christ inform your politics? Well, everything I do is because of my faith. I'm only involved in politics because of my faith. Um, even the Lord led me to get into politics and just be supportive of it and do things and support those that represent Him in it. So, um, and you know, I think the Lord has been very gracious and good to show me that the scales of justice are only good um, with Him in it. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. This has been Lisa Panette. She is with Keep the Republic. There's a revival here in Alabama and it's coming from all over the country. Today I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.